the difference between a premise pilot and a prototype pilot, a premise pilot is basically an origin pilot. It has to be episode one. It sets up the series. Normally, it's got backstory without which the series wouldn't even be able to start. This is how Spider-Man gets bitten by the spider and gets his powers. This is how so-and-so becomes a detective when he used to be a, uh, a salesman. Whatever the premise of it is, that's what the pilot is supposed to, to get to. The danger of a premise pilot, and this is why many instructors either flatly forbid students to do them or, or try and minimize the premise part of it, is that it winds up not being a typical episode of the show, and it also winds up being the backstory. It's like, okay, we've spent an hour telling you how Spider-Man became Spider-Man. Now next week, we're going to start having some fun with that. Next week, we're actually going to do the show. We've just given you the, it's all, it's all set up. So there's that line to walk between something that's just set up and something that even in the pilot tells a complete story and isn't just, well, s stick with this because you have to know all this stuff, but next week we'll start having some fun. A prototype pilot, on the other hand, just jumps right in. It could be episode two, it could be episode nine, it could be anywhere in the rotation. It doesn't matter. We're just jumping right in and this is the series and this is how it goes. If we need to explain stuff about how these people got to be where they are, we'll do it on the run. We'll do it as we go. We'll parcel it out over the course of an episode or even the course of a season or we may not even tell you any of it. You may not have to know it things like Law and & Order and, and CSI, you didn't need an episode where, oh, let's put together a, 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 a unit that's going to go investigate forensic stuff. No, they were, they were just there, they were just doing it. So, generally speaking, I think for a new writer, the prototype pilot may seem a little harder, but if you can do one, it becomes a much more typical episode of your show, and it allows you to skip all that nonsense about the backstory that really, especially for a new writer, will, will choke your story dead. I talk about looking at the shows that you like and taking your favorite elements from them, uh, kind of in the vein of, re uh, what I really liked about this show was this, but not so much this. Maybe, maybe I liked the camaraderie, but I didn't like the plot lines. Maybe I liked the action, but I didn't think the dialogue was very good. I encourage people to look at their shows and say, okay, this is what really captivated me about that show, and see if you can take those elements from a couple of shows, put them together into a show of your own. Uh, one of the things I do, certainly nowadays in my writing, is I look to Farscape, which was a show, the thing that really appealed to me about that show, not only working on it, but watching it, was it could do anything, and it would do anything, and it would do, any, it would do things long before the point you would normally do them in a series. Oh, the show's over where our main character gets back to Earth? Well, obviously that's not going to happen until episode 100 or so. We did it in episode 16. And now where are we going? So I always, uh, what, I, what I learned from that, what I picked up from that, for, for me anyway, was let, just don't be afraid to be outrageous. Be bold. Use up your ideas right up front and you know, you'll get more down the line. Uh, I looked at other, I looked outside of television also. I looked at old movies and things. One of the things I loved is, is uh, the movies of the 30s, the breakneck pace, the rapid dialogue. So I try and get that in on a series wherever I can because I'm just a fan of that. So uh, the sort of Nick and Nora uh, banter that's you know, become a paradigm for so many TV shows, it, you know, it goes back to the 30s. And uh, so I, I steal from all over the place. When you're writing things for characters to do in television, it's very easy to go overboard. And I see writers that try and detail every, every blink of the eye that the actor's supposed to do. Actors hate that. They just <laughs> they ignore it, just as they pretty much ignore parentheticals and dialogues. Like, don't, don't you dare tell me how to read the line. I'll figure it out. I do encourage, though, writers think about not specifically how the actors are doing every last moment, but what they are doing. Uh, the example I use in the chapter is, yeah, there's a couple of ways to drink a glass of wine or pour yourself a glass of wine that don't require telling the actor which hand to use and every last moment and every last reaction to it, but just a general sense of your character is poor and this is the last bottle of wine he's got and he's going to enjoy it. Or your character is rich, but he's had such a terrible life experience now, he's going to open his most expensive bottle of wine and just chug it because he doesn't, he's not even going to taste it, he's just going to drink it for the, for the alcohol part of it. So th you can do things like that that illustrate character and actors, in my experience, like that sort of thing because it gives them something to play. They'll play it in any of 90 different ways because that's what an actor does, an actor brings it to it. But at least you've given them the framework, you've given them a place to, to start from.